Right now, what we find is that uh, germline information and um, transcriptomic uh, information or genomic information about tumors is very heavily siloed, um, with the exception of BRCA1 and 2, which are sort of the poster child for the idea of maybe combining this information. And so we find that germline information tends to be really, really associated with the idea of risk and cancer risk and the development of cancer, but that genomic and transcriptomic information really tend to be more associated with potential therapies and um, prognostication. Um, but there aren't really that many uh, variations with the exception of um, a couple of different scores that look at um, just BRCA1 and 2 with regard to the idea of combining this information or trying to leverage germline risk information um, which we hypothesize would have some overlap to um, sort of what is going on with the breast cancer once it develops. And so the idea of this project was to try to combine germline information um, as well as uh, transcriptomic information from breast cancers to try to see if we could improve prognostication uh, for women across uh, existing stratification and across existing measures where we already can do that. So right now in the field in breast cancer, we use transcriptomic information um, that is RNA from tumors and, and, and gene expression data, um, but it's used like primarily in the context of uh, women who have early stage estrogen receptor positive disease. And so what ends up happening is that women who have uh, triple negative disease or um, HER2 positive, HER2 enriched disease, largely the other major subtypes, um, really don't have the same degree of prognostication that's available to them. Um, and accordingly, women who have estrogen receptor positive early stage disease, they can get information from their tumor that allows them to decide to undergo or not undergo chemotherapy based on how well they anticipate doing. But women who have HER2 enriched or triple negative disease have to literally undergo chemotherapy for us to be able to prognosticate how well we expect them to do. And we're still getting that information. So some way to be able to apply this type of information more broadly is, is sort of uh, an exciting grail for the people who are interested in genomics and breast cancer. Um, in this poster, just to, to kind of walk through uh, what is happening and, and what we were trying to do, what we're using is a method called PredictScan, which is a transcriptome-wide association method. There are a couple of other similar association methods that have been designed. Um, in the bioinformatics space and uh, are becoming increasingly popular across a variety of mediums. And the idea of that tool is to take a bunch of different variations that are across the genome and have been associated with disease and to try to aggregate those variations together uh, into what, where they may be affecting a specific gene so that ultimately you get uh, a gene that's associated with your disease of interest. And so we were trying to apply that method, but prioritizing the genes that are most related to breast risk um, to see if that would help stratify uh, women based on their outcome. Um, so that's the, that's the idea of the project. And this was done in patients of European ancestry. So there are many caveats with regard to that, but this is just using publicly available data from the largest genome-wide association studies for risk, um, the largest uh, available data at the individual level from the TCGA for European ancestry patients, um, as well as trying to validate in the UK Biobank, um, which is also a very large uh, individual level uh, data structure. And so ultimately, we designed three scores, one that was based on just risks, as a, risks associated with specific genotypes and those aggregations, specific points in the genome, one that was based on this transcriptome-wide measure applied for both risk and outcome, and one that was uh, using the uh, gene expression data from the tumor, as well as the prediction to outcome. And what we ultimately saw was that there was a signal from the um, predicted transcriptome score. So the one that's using uh, this attempt to use the, the transcriptome wide association method, um, but that that score didn't end up staying stable and sort of having a significant effect when applying clinical data and when applying um, validation measures. So what we hope that that means is that, um, and what we expect that to mean is that 
um, there is an association. We increasingly see that across other studies in using this transcript home wide information to help gauge better clinical outcomes in breast cancer. That's just starting to come up but that the question of survival may be too broad and trying to apply it at once across large populations may be a little bit broad. Where we might go with this next and where the, the field may find more yield from this type of method is from applying it to patients um, based on treatment type, since that's where the sort of the easiest place from a pharmacogenomic standpoint, from a genomic standpoint, we would expect the germline to have uh, an association to what's happening with the patient.